yes. Okay, so this should be interesting. Thank you so much for joining us for the Q2 podcast sponsored by Penvisio. I'm your host, Joel Lopez, and I am grinning, smiling from ear to ear because what started off as a rant turned into a conversation, then turned into a podcast episode. Yeah. Just like that. How's your Friday doing? That's that's what I'm, my Friday Friday is great because this is happening. But Yarima, thank you so much for joining. Uh, how, what, what what's going on in your end? Hey, I, I'm good. I, I I appreciate you reaching out, and I wanted I wanted the viewing viewing audience to to kind of get a gauge from your perspective because I've been on here a couple of days, and like you said, this is kind of how you and I met, which is beautiful. How the universe makes things happen that people can come along and and, and really dialogue and have substantive conversation. So. I put out kind of my political views on why I felt like it was a waste of time to vote. And you kind of you came back and, and and hit some points. And so because I think that this is an open forum, what I do and what you do, yeah. I wanted my viewing audience because a lot of times they're in agreement with me. But there are always those who have their own, you know, their own way that they that they look at things. And that's beautiful because everybody shouldn't look at things the same way. So I wanted I wanted to get your perspective uh, in terms of my viewing audience and, and and what you think the political process is, how important it is for you. Yeah, for sure. So just for listeners who might not know, have the context of what we're talking about, uh, Yarima did an impassioned video and used an analogy of how your vote is like money. And based on, uh, you know, on what kind, if you don't like what the Hillary store is giving you and you don't like what the Trump store is giving you, you don't have to vote because voting is like money. And I kind of, I would, I'm going to be honest, you're going to keep it exactly 100% transparent. Please do. It it pissed me off to no (laughs) end. Okay. And so that's why before we kick off anything else, I did that rant. I sent that video. I shared it. And um, it's so uh, a lot of respect for you for, you know, allowing this to happen because you don't have to do this. Um, and the power of social media, you know, so, so, so it's amazing what this can do. Yes. Um, so, so I figured let's give them context on, on that and start from that, you know, uh, do you want to kick it off and kind of do a summary of why you feel like it's, it's, you shouldn't cast your vote for either party if you don't like what both are selling? Well, well, my position, and I'll, I'll reiterate it again real brief. Sure. Um, my position is that, uh, specifically, uh, I and and I'm gonna since we're being candid uh, sure. and let let's keep it candid. My position is that specifically with Black and Latino communities, um, it seems like our vote is solicited once every four or eight years, depending on how long someone is in office. But we never really see any results from that, and uh, there's a lot of promises that go into uh, when when politicians come to solicit us. And first of all, let me let me clarify that when I was talking about voting, I was specifically talking about on a national level. I'm talking about with the president and that I have no problem with people voting on a local level. I think that that's important because you can actually have an impact on on, a, on your local level. But as far as when we're talking president, I think that they give a lot of promises that they never specifically with uh, as concerns black and Latino uh, uh, populations and communities, they never follow through on those promises. And so my position is that it's a waste. And then when we look at the dynamics of this election, uh, we're talking Trump, we're talking Hillary. Uh, and I think I did, I talked a little history behind, specifically behind Hillary. I didn't do too much analogy on Trump, but I, because I think Trump speaks for himself. So I did a little, uh, a little bit on, on Hillary and just some of the things that her husband did uh, while he was in office, and then some of the history with her as far as her, uh, one of her mentors being Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood. And that, and I don't want to go into all of that, but that was my analogy that basically the vote was a waste and that if we're going to give our vote, then we need some guarantees, some promises that are actually going to come to fruition uh, if we're going to give it. And that's why I made the analogy the vote is like money. I'm not just going to go into a store and spend my money on anything just because I'm allowed to spend my money. I need to, I need to, you need to be selling something that is going to benefit me or a product that I at least like. And so that was kind of the breakdown. And now I would like to turn it over to you 
because sure. I haven't I, I haven't heard from you too much. I did read some of the feed and commentary that you gave back, and I thought it was you know you had some valid points there. So yeah, and and just to kick things off too on my side, you know, I made an error on one of my uh, an, uh, on a point that I was trying to make, mm-hmm. and uh, that was. Like if you don't vote, then it's you get you, you run the risk of being the worst of the two, and obviously, Arima, you know the the analogy and the parallels between Donald Trump and a Hitler regime. Yeah, he here is he is rising to power, and I made the incorrect statement that Hitler was voted in. So for the record, I want to own it because that's the type of person I am. That if I'm wrong on the fact, I want to kind of own it. So Hitler was not voted in. Uh, so it kind of took it diluted my point, but the point still remains that out of respect for the civil rights movement, what we gained through that, um, I felt like it's it's our obligation. It's not a, well, not maybe not an obligation because our rights are free. We can free free to do whatever we want in a sense. But that when it comes to voting, you know, there in my opinion, my position is that there is such a thing as a lesser of two evils on this one. And I think it, if we kind of took them side by side. Even in, in the context of Hillary and her track record, anything is better than Trump. And just to avoid that, I, it's not even voting for Hillary, it's voting against Trump. Mm. Even that gives us just this much of improvement or uh, a step in the right direction to kind of keep the fight going. Because I personally, my belief is that by not voting, that's not a radical move. It's not, there's no, there's no, I don't really see any, um, power behind that and the fact we're giving away our power and we do that already as much as it is so mm-hmm. that was kind of like the, the essence behind my point but my but to get a better understanding because i want to make sure i understand you completely on this piece is what do you think that they're equals in terms of how crappy of the candidates they are for president or do you think one is worse than the other well well my position is is that and, and what you say what you say makes complete sense if if I believe and others believe that that one is actually going to do something. If if I believe if I believe that 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 the president really runs the country, if I believe that, then then what you say has a lot of a lot of validity to it. And I can't dispute that. The problem is, is I don't believe that. I believe that that uh, International Monetary Fund. I believe that I believe that the Rothschilds. I believe that the big bankers uh, are the are the puppet masters and pull the strings. Now, and, and I believe that even with Barack in office. And I, I even made a statement uh, the other day because a guy a guy asked. He said, and he just I think he just assumed that I voted for Barack. And I let him know that under no uncertain terms, I like Barack and I I liked Barack. And I thought that and I will admit, I'll be the first to admit that I was exceptionally pleased to have the first black African-American in office. I, I won't. On our dime. Absolutely. I, yeah, I will buy that. However, I have a good friend whose father is an activist in Chicago. And I respect this man. He's been an activist his whole life, and he's walked hand in hand and worked on some serious issues with Barack. And before that election, he made it clear to me and a few others, Barack is nothing more than a politician. So although I I like Barack and I wanted him in office, I wouldn't vote for him. Because, because again, I have to believe that the president is the president. And I, I just don't believe that. Now, if somebody can give me some clarity, maybe it's you, Joe, that, that, <laughs> you know, that, that they are actually the people in power that can make changes, I might go for that, but I don't, I don't believe that. Here, let's, let's deep dive on that because I think there might be, a, there might be one piece that you might be missing or I'm, I'm not really communicating effectively on. Okay. And it's this, if voting for Hillary Clinton gives us X amount of time more to keep the fight going, hmm. uh, I will take that. Um, if not voting, enables a vote for Trump, which thus might in turn lead to a more forceful, more efficient, uh, systematic oppression of black and brown people, I'll do anything to buy us a little more time. Even if it happened, whether it could happen on both their watches, but if it, if, if under Hillary's watch, it can, uh, we can hold off this a little bit longer or just for whatever reason, if it can, um, 
my, the assumption is it will be less likely or less as fast uh, or efficient. Um, I'll, I'll go that route just for the sake of the struggle that we're, we're fighting against and, and giving us that much more, um, I guess, buffer or wiggle room to keep going. I, I, just, I just don't realize how, how, how people um, can forget how fast Hitler really was able to kind of absorb power, well, even as a chancellor position uh, when he was chancellor. And it, it took people kind of disengaging and turning the other way. And I, that's all I'm saying is that if, if the voting for Hillary slows that machine down, even if Hillary is not really down really for us, then I'll take that. I'll, I'll, I'll cast my vote because to even get to the table to vote, uh, a lot of people pay the price. And I, I, feel, I feel dirty inside just even talking about it, the thought of not voting because, and the price that was paid for that. I'm not cool with that. So that's my, that was, that was kind of like my iteration on that. So I, I agree with you 100% that they're never going to deliver. They rarely will. I mean, there, there is, I mean, some people can argue that Barack Obama's presidency in some steps made the country better. And there are some communities with health, uh, who are black and brown communities that have health care that normally would, never, would not have it otherwise without his policies. So whether, where, where, regardless of where you land on Barack Obama and his uh, effectiveness as a president for the United States or even for black and brown people for that matter, regardless of where you land on that, I think there can be a statement made that, um, you know, it's an, something is better than nothing. And I wasn't even putting that much weight on them anyways. I just don't want Trump to win. Okay. Uh, now, so, and, and, and again, Joe, Ed, I, I, and for, for the viewers that, that are just tuning in, I'm, I'm talking with uh, good brother, Joe Ed Lopez. Uh, we're having this, this candid discussion pertaining to, uh, you know, the elections, my position is we should we we don't have an obligation to vote. His position is that we should vote for someone. So I would I would I would pose I would pose a couple things, Joy, that I think are important. One being, uh, and I don't know if a lot of people even remember. I, I don't think that the I don't think that the analogy with Hitler is 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 a fair one in the sense that that. We're talking about two different two different countries, but we're also talking about two pil- two different political regimes, uh, as opposed to Germany in ni- the early to mid 1900s and the U.S. right now. Uh, my point being is that if we if we if we do a historical analysis, uh, the Republican Party wasn't the party of that that, that really implemented slavery. Um, that was the DN. That was the Democratic Party, and. Uh, I mean, this is historical fact. The Republicans uh, were not the initial uh, Southern slave regime holders, one. And two is, if we're going to cast a vote, are you saying we squander it if we go with a third party, like a Jill Stein or... Uh, these other third party candidates that are available because not at all, not at all. And um, and, and to that point, I, I feel like voting for even if for a radical third party, something is better than nothing. So voting for someone is better than nothing um, because and to the point about the historical fact um, and you're right. You know, there's always going to be parallels and and things that don't work when you compare this to Hitler and his, his rise. Um, and some might seem like, oh, that's extreme. Trump is not Hitler. It's not going to be not, not even close. There are some parallels there. It's a little scary. Absolutely. But without even that being said, to your point, is a totally different piece context. The broader point is that all democracies have a vulnerability for this kind of internal implosion to an authoritarian regime. If if he were able to get the sympathies of the military, which you we can assume he, he does in large pockets. Um, uh, especially on the lower end of the ranks, uh, it, it, we don't realize in historical perspective how quick regimes can turn. Mm-hmm. And so I don't even want to come close to that. That's why our founding fathers were very diligent in saying, you know, uh, this is not something that we should use the word squander, that we should really, uh, we have to be vigilant in making sure our liberties and our, 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 our freedom are kept. And, and it's like these are, the, these are the moments when people say, that can never happen here. You go to uh, German, uh, Germany in 1930-something, and you ask the people, what do you think about this Hitler guy? He's crazy, yeah, he's a little out there, he's a little extreme, but it's not going to happen here. 
they say the same thing and the pattern is saying the, the lack of apathy and lack of engagement and political awareness and involvement leads, creates the fertile ground for a shift and uh, a target. Now, you're in, you and I already know we're practically there anyways. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when it comes to our civil liberties and our freedoms and all that stuff. But if I, if we can get some, some room, again, that small margin, I, I want to fight for that because the people before us, the Arima, fought tooth and nail for their in their lives and their blood for even just a little bit of ground, and that's precious blood. And I don't want to disparage that by saying no. So I, I'd rather someone vote for a third party that even if it has the probability of one percent for it to work, respect because the few people who make shit the, the in history change happens in a few in small pockets, and if that's you. Vote for that third party because you never know. That could be the path. Okay, so so a viewer just hit me and said, well, if voting for a third party is like, is might as well be voting for Trump. I guess, I guess. What do you think about that? Well, I... I, I can see that too. I can see the argument being made is just might as well give it to Trump. But at least, I, I see, at least you're voting your values. At least you're voting, you, yeah. you know, at least. Well, I... I to a certain extent, I well, so we know that there are some variables here. There, are, you know, you got the electoral college. Yeah. You got a lot of states where the vote is not going to count because the electoral college is going to play. Uh, right. But we also we also have we also and there's a few different ways, Joe, to look at this. One one thing that I want to point out is that is that as as bad as we might we might look at a, at a Donald Trump, the fact of the matter is is that Donald Trump. Uh, doesn't doesn't have a record as far as being a president. Hillary Clinton kind of does because she backed yeah. policies that her husband. Now, when we look at when we look at her husband, and the facts are the facts. More blacks and Latinos were locked up under Bill Clinton's watch than any president in the history of the country. Now he might have sweetened sweetened the pot and made it look like. Uh, you know, made, made himself look sweet to where we kind of, for the short term, it, yeah. it, it, it was, it was, we thought it was a good thing, but we see the long-term effects of that. And so Absolutely. one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to get sidewinded by Hillary Clinton who comes in, who people are saying, okay, in the, in the event let, to block Trump, let's get her. And then she comes in with some subtle policies, just like her husband but but they have long term effects thirty and forty years from now, and we come to find out that wow, you know we we just got bamboozled again, mm. by by you know, because Clinton has been there before now, yeah, and, and, yeah. and she's been a senator, so she's ha- held some public office to where we actually can kind of gauge uh, uh, her politics as opposed to Donald. Now I'm not saying Donald is the answer. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, what do you say to that as far as the policies themselves? Because at the end of the day, if if I'm telling people vote, if I'm telling people vote, there has to be some accountability. Like, OK, if we vote, Urema, and they don't give us or nothing, nothing trickles down. And, you know, I used yeah. that term the other day. Then, then what's it all for? So what would you say to that? Yeah, it's a great question. Two quick points to that. One, I think uh, there is some. Um post-traumatic stress that has, has, <laughs> yeah. has some residue with, with the Clintons. And that's very real. And then we have to acknowledge that. Yes. And uh, it's complete BS. It's, 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 we, we, we were bamboozled by Clinton, um, both Clintons um, historically. Uh, and to date on the record, you know, Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich, which by the way, that whole uh, uh, legislation that led to, locking up so many black and brown people um, have come together and said, yeah, we overstretched on that one and apologized. So whether you think that's a legitimate apology or, or regret or not, um, that that did happen and they acknowledged that. And now we're now we are where we are and we can't do nothing about that. We are where we are. So I, I, I don't want to frame our future through the lens of the past because you never – I use the analogy of driving a car. Like you don't drive forward by looking at the rear view mirror. You definitely want to check what's behind you, but to move us forward, we have to look forward. Mm-hmm. And um, that's one point to that. And to the point of like the responsibility of you know, um, I it come, uh, fun, fundamentally it comes down to this: 
we can both we can be bamboozled like crazy and the the person that we should be really be scared about is Hillary. We have to vote with what we got now, what we, what we know now, and that's all we can do. What information do we have now that can give us the best decision for the future? And as it stands today, in light of the Clinton's history, and by the way, let's be real, um, Bill is not going to be president. Hillary is going to be president. And so I don't feel it's, a, it's 100% fair to say Hillary because Bill can't or did X, Y, and Z. I don't want to do that too much, you oh, know? Okay, okay, but go so, ahead. So that's, that's my thing. It's like, you, you, I agree, there's some hesitation. There's some real, like, issues with that, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I still, even with that looming, mm -hmm. I think that is still better than Trump. Than Trump. I still think so. I still think so. Okay. Uh, because we have been breaking down a little bit. We made some progress. And I have an episode on this um, uh, uh, two weeks ago about the breaking down the prison industrial complex, and, and especially with the youth juvenile detention centers. Like, we are making some pro progress in that area. So those things can be, and, and I 100% believe will be undone in years. But for the president's role, we only have one vote, folks, and I don't think not voting is an option for us. Okay, let me, so, so let me, let me, and, and, and with, when you talk about the, the prison industrial complex, I, 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 that valid point, I don't know that the gains that are making, I do a lot of talk and I, I, I Yo, travel and do a, I do a lot of talking on the, on the school to prison pipeline that is currently going on. And so uh, we do know that Hillary, you know, made the, made the point about super predators, um, Two points I want to make. One is that if I'm president and I'm married, you can best believe my wife is going to. She might not be. Right. She might not You're be right. calling the shots, but there are some things we're going to have some bedroom talk. And right. so Bill is going to You're influence. You're assuming they sleep together in the same room. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, but but even more point. I want to I want to ask you what you think about this because it has been said, and and again, if this is the case, if this is the case. I still find it to be very, very underhanded, very deceitful and very fraudulent. It has been said that the dynamics of this race are the way that they are right now because they okay. wanted to pit Hillary against somebody who is who appears to be such a racist and so, so far left okay. that she would get the vote and, and, and be the first woman. What are your thoughts about that? So you're talking about, Yurima, uh, social engineering. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? If you're listening to this right now, and listen, I'm not up on the conspiracy theories and the underground like information on, on what power decisions and power stakeholders like. You said bankers and Charles all those things. Yeah. I'm not as up as I could be or maybe as I should be, but I've done some research earlier on um, years ago. Okay. And if you're listening to this and thinking, wow, this is getting kind of crazy, again, going, going down the loopy trail, you're a freaking idiot. You have to look at history. You have to look at your sources. There is something to be said about social engineering from major corporations and governments that are, don't really have real authority but somehow come to the table and make decisions on our behalf. And mm -hmm. you have to look at that as, as for real. With that said, um, I have to go back to, you, you might have seen this from detective shows and stuff like that, um, where you have to go, the safest thing to do when you're trying to problem solve something or get behind a mystery is start with the most simplistic theory first, then investigate, then work your way from there. But uh, I think to make that kind of um, assumption or to, if someone believes that, that's a, this is a massive social engineering ploy, I, I find it's unlikely that it's that intentional, um, more so than the maybe the bankers on the left and the bankers on the right, you know, really just want to have their side win. And to that extent, I could probably get behind that. But in terms of both of them being played for us, I, I have that. That might be a little too much of a leap uh, okay. for, for me personally. But again, you might be more read up on that than I am. Okay. Well, I think I, I I think it was real important that uh, and 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 I respect I respect all views I respect yours I, I really uh, respect yours, Joy, because you reached out and I think it's I think it's good, I. I think it's good 
that people can agree to disagree. Yeah, and agree. we're not cussing each other out. We're not, you know, I actually yeah. like you. I like your views. Me too, um, man. I like you too, man. And, and uh, you know, I, I think that this is important, especially uh, because on a communal level, at the community level, we need to be having these 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 talks. We need to have be having this dialogue. Whether a person is actually going to go out and vote, it, at least the mind is open now to some new avenues, some new forms of thinking. And I respect the fact that you say, you know, we sh- when you make the comparison between between Hillary and Trump, you know, it's like, hey, we got to vote to keep him out. Um, it still doesn't change my position. <laughs> but, uh, hey, you but, know, it you is know, what it is, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, but I just, I, 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 at least if it gets uh, your listeners and your audience members to at least think, yeah. you know, um, and reconsider or that, I think that is a step in the right direction. Um, but uh, well, you're, you're on Facebook Live right now, right? Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll be interested to do a poll right now because I think it is one of the things that came up on the, on the stream when you were doing it and I was on it um, was that. I, they don't want to discuss. I, I, we're getting into the points about using that analogy. Like the, the analogy of money and votes was the wrong analogy because um, money has a market, and markets mean exchanges and competition. And we only have one president. And so I was making these points. Um, some people are saying, "Well, I don't discuss this with people who are not black." Hmm. And it's a very interesting thing. Interesting thing to me because I'm still landing on these things and growing and evolving. Okay. Well, if for for listener for people who are listening on your Facebook Live, what would they consider Latinos as part of that people group that that should be united to kind of fight this thing and fight oppression and fight for systematic equality, um, or is this something that should be a, a, a separatist thing? Like African Americans have their own unique history, and Latinos should really uh, kind of fight the system on their own. And in their own ways, what's your stance on that? And and maybe a field, a field of Facebook Live. Like, do they think Latinos should partner with African Americans to fight together on these issues? Uh, it's a heavy you question. Know, I know, it, but. It, it, <laughs> and it's and I think it, I think it's a great question. Uh, uh, my my personal stance is this, Joe, and and you know we're we're live, we're keeping it real, we're talking. It's a great dialogue. Um, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do my part, um, for my people, because at the end of the day, I think that, that, um, a lot of times things are ignored. Things aren't said. Uh, there's no real discussion, no real dialogue. There's no real historical analysis. There's no upliftment. And we need that more in the black community. We need unification, more upliftment in our community than, than anything. With that said, from a spiritual standpoint, I'm, I'm, I, I, I get that we are all interconnected. So, yeah. um, and I also get that at the end of the day, uh, all of us, all of us have to make that concerted effort. And because at the end of the day, if it just, just the sheer numbers, mathematically, we outnumber them, oh, all the people, all the people outnumber. So uh, we outnumber all the politicians. We outnumber all the police. So from that standpoint, Uh, It's imperative that we come together. And I personally, I see how the media and how these different outlets try to play us against each other. And we fall for it. We go for it. All the time, yeah. But at the same time, with that said, there are some real issues, some real racial issues, uh, uh, some real uh, 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 issues that separate us as groups. And this is this is black and Latino this is black and white. This is black and Asian. This is Latino and white. This is, you know, so there's a whole bunch of different things that separate us. So I think each group gets, each group has to get theirs right. They have to get <laughs> their group right. And yeah. I, when, when people in, like I get inboxes all the time from, from white people and they're like, what can I do? Mm. What can, you know, what can I do? Because I listen to you. I, I, I see the plight that, that black people are going through. I, and even some of them say, hey, I'm, I get privileged because of white skin. And yeah. they say that. So they're like, what can I do? And I always tell them the same thing. Go back, have those conversations, sit down in those groups, understand, overstand that you're going to lose some friends along the way. Mm-hmm. But that's not a bad thing because you're going to get a chance to figure out who's who. But you have to sit down at the table and have those conversations. And so there's no, there's no disconnection and disunity with us, bro. 
you yeah. know, but at the same time, uh, we do have to teach our people. We do. Yeah. And it's yeah. so important. And the reason why I asked that, and uh, okay, Ad, I want to take, I want to be respectful of your time. Are you good for a couple more minutes still? Absolutely. Okay, cool, man. Um, the reason why I asked this is because we know, especially since that Latino in America series came out, um, Afro-Latino identities have been, you know, more and more coming to surface in yes. terms of how people identify with their Afro heritage and Latino circles and um, what even Caribbean, um, even Latin America, even, you know, Mexicans. Yes. Um, they're more and more identifying like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm Afro-Latino. And, and with that said, it becomes a very uh, interesting point because... On one hand, we do hear some circles say, hey, you know, if you're, the only separation between uh, me and you is a boat ride, right? I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> right. And, and when they dropped us off, it was in the Caribbean. And when they dropped you off, it was in America. And so that's the only difference, you know? And so, yes. so some, that, that's becoming more and more prominent. And to be honest, I, when I think about a black and brown united front, um, with not so much saying, you know, hey, I'm Boricua, and I'm fighting for the struggle with my African American friends. It's more like, no, I'm I'm Boricua, but I I know the blood that runs in my it eventually goes back to um, Africa, mm. and so I'm Afro Latino, and I'm real with that, and that, that that's not like a separation so much as so much a um, acknowledgement of uh, holding a bicultural identity almost, yes. and, and they're equal in weight. So my struggle with that is um, it's a it's a crazy thought to think what can happen if that were to kind of meld together in one united front. Having said that, you're exactly right. Um, historically speaking, there's no other people in the world's history that has suffered as uh, an African American or, again, overall Africans uh, uh, of color yes. uh, overall. So that has to be real. Um, I guess, I guess, uh, uh, one last question too is, you know, a, a lot of this talk, uh, you know, is I hear about threads of Pan-Africanism and obviously there's a spectrum with that. Yes. Um, it's sad to me that the first time I heard of Pan-Africanism was from Dr. Umar mm. Johnson. Yes. That was the first time I heard of it. And obviously, you know, some of the things he says are kind of crazy out there sometimes, but, uh, what do you, is there a reason What's, what's your take on Pan-Africanism as a ideology, and why is it name dropped some more? Because a lot of people are talking about the same stuff, but not really naming it. And I think it's uh, it could hold us back from not really being intentional with uh, uniting people and getting people around the same ideas. Well, you know, you know it, it's funny that it's funny that you you mentioned that, and and I like what you just said about the 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 Afro Latino connection because I think that historically. <clears throat> um, for, for the conscious, we've yeah. been knowing that, you know, we've been knowing that. And it's, and it's kind of like, it's kind of like getting, trying to get people on board. I remember, uh, I had a, I had a very good friend, uh, and he was actually a, a, um, he was affiliated with the Latin Kings mm -hmm. and he, it, he was not only affiliated, but he was one of the top leaders. And he said his thing was, is teaching his people where they come from. And he said when he used to teach classes, it was such a surprise. Like real and he was oh, like yeah. adamant about, yo, it we might we might be we might be Puerto Rican here, but it we come from a lineage of Africa. And yeah. he was af adamant about about pushing that. As far as the Pan African movement, that isn't uh, uh Pan Africanism, that isn't that isn't a new term. It's been no. around for for centuries. Yeah. Um and I when Kind of when you look at it, uh, you can go back as far as Marcus Garvey, uh, the Garveyite movie uh, movement, and and that sort of thing. So I think that um, I think that it's something that that we need to look at, but not only look at, study, research, but also before we get to that, because you got the conscious minds who are there. But we, the, the conscious minds have to teach because everybody's not there. And that's mm -hmm. the point. This, this thing has step stages and degrees to it, it, which is why I'm so, like, with the vote. And I get your point. We're kind of on two different, we're kind of, and I, I fully understand, and I believe that you understand my point as well. Yeah. But I think that there's step stages and degrees that we all have to work, that we all have to work. So, so there are certain people that they're not going to get it. 
but they have to be you have to they have to be brought up to that point. And the same thing in the Latino community. There are certain people who aren't going to get it, but there are certain conscious minds that do and have had it for years and have been trying to teach their people like, yo, this is it. We're one people. What are you doing? There is no separatism. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, you know, it's a, it, hard, it's a hard thing to balance because it's you said the spiritual side. We're all one. Yeah. But, but yeah, but history is is a little different, though, in, in our lineage and, and our experiences. Um, and it's tough. I'm still struggling with that, too, my man. I, I, I yeah, it's tough. Well, well, and, and then we have to we have to come we have to come to the understanding. And this is it, Joe, Ed, that that. There's been a big trick that was played. And we've been yeah. caught up in it. And so and so what happens is that when the history and the history keeps going by and new generations and and if there's or if there aren't griots there to pass down that lineage, to pass down that history, it gets it gets diluted. And so, yeah. you know, we've there's a lot of trickery that is played that is played into this. And if we really knew who we were, if we really knew the power that we have, especially as a group, if we really knew the interconnection that we have on a spiritual level, there could be, and I'm always saying that there could be nothing that could stop us, man. Real yeah, talk. Yeah, well, well, Garvey, the fact that he was able to mobilize so many people without Twitter, without Facebook, without all those things, yes. is, it's really no excuse when you get one people under one um, one unification, and it's a very powerful uh, thing. Um, so with that said... Um, I wanted to kind of just you know, do a plug on your stuff. I'm always uh, a week of my come back to this and do this another another time too. Yes. Um, because I would love to have you on again and, and, and dice up these things some more. Um, but you know, you're you're an artist. Yeah. You're doing some. Uh, I saw your website. You know, where can people find you on for my end on what your work you're doing on? And um, you know, it's, is the album released? Or are you still working on it? I thought I, thought I saw a video saying you're still working on it. But well, where can people find you? Uh, well, they can go to my webpage, www.yarimakarama.com. That's Y-A-R-I-M-A-K-A-R-A-M-A.com. They can go there for messaging, uh, booking info there. If they want to find out my performance dates and locations, I will uh, also post on there when my album is coming out. It should be within, as a matter of fact, the producer, I just put up a post today. The producer, just uh, he just finished. So, nice. um I should be releasing that within the next couple of weeks uh, at the very the very latest. I'm hoping before then, but even more so, I, and I know you do this as well and would love to team up with you, but they can go there for booking for, you know, I, I, I do speaking engagements, motivational speaking, universities, colleges, uh, high schools. So I travel around the country. Um, I'm a spoken word artist, hip hop artist, yes. uh, but I'm an activist and mm -hmm. I believe in community uh, upliftment. I believe in community empowerment. I believe in, in uh, community growth and economics. So that's the platform. That's what I push. And uh, I think that we, you know, we get to, we need to get to a point where we connect and Absolutely. we're, we're working together and, and moving. Uh, but both communities have issues that we, that both communities need to deal with. And that's yeah, real. Sure. So, but for that's sure. where you can find me. And, and also, my Facebook, Twitter, IG, I always say connect with me, never follow me, because I don't believe mm. you should be following anybody, but we can always connect, we can always network, we can always grow and build. Yeah, well, this is uh, how it all started on social media when I asked you to for, uh, to, for the talk, so that's that's an example of that. Yeah. Um, what about you know, yourself? Plug yourself as well, Joe Ed. Oh, well, thanks so much, man. I appreciate that. Um, listen, the, the my website is panvizio.org, P-A-N-B-I-S-I-O.org. Um, interviewed cats like Jeffrey Canada, who was featured on Waiting for Superman, to white anti-racist activists like Tim Wise, um, and higher education you know, folks too, because you know, education is a huge part. And we know we're not getting a lot of consciousness out of K through 12, so a lot of times, uh, you know, higher ed seems to be a, the last shot for someone to get this stuff. Um, so we do a lot of interviews for that, and also for those who are looking to. Um, you know, we're trying to find a voice and increase their platform because you're right, Yarima, like education is so key. When people understand the history behind this, it's like a light bulb that comes up and then that leads to action. Yes. So if you're looking to like, you know, increase your platform, increase your voice and your reach, you know, that's where it comes down to is like your website, your social media, what's the strategies to expand that reach. And so I help, I only help social change organizations and activists um, uh, with those things. So panvizio.org is the website. 
the Q2 podcast is, uh, you find the tab there, or find it on iTunes for actionable interviews that can walk away with like actual uh, things you can do in applying your community. That's the role for the Q2 podcast. So thanks so much for asking. And, um, we at Remo, if you're in the Philly area, man, come by, man. Love to hang out with you. And, uh, yeah, we'll definitely double team and team up on some stuff. Hey, I'm good. It's funny. I didn't know you were in Philly. That's great because my best friend lives in Philly. I'm actually trying to get up there next month. So we can definitely, oh my goodness, yeah, definitely. we can definitely make that happen. I was in Philly like a couple months ago, uh, and we kicked it. I actually did some performances up there. So yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely going to reach out to you. That's, that's love. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Awesome, man. Yeah. And, uh, we just had an episode, um, with someone, uh, on the front porch because I'm trying to bring it back to the block, you know, where yeah. I actually put my equipment down and, you heard the kids in the background, the beeping and all the other stuff. So, uh, yeah, we'll do it next time we do an episode, get some wine, kind of hang back, talk, and we'll do it right in the porch, get a crowd going. Hey, that's great, uh, man. That, yeah, that's so great. Taking that. it back to the old school. I like that. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> exactly. Some things need to be taken back. <laughs> that's true. I believe that. I'm a tech guy. I'm all about futuristic stuff, but my God, we are dying. We need some. Okay. Some wisdom from from ages, you know. Yes. So I'm all about that too, man. It's all about that balance. So yeah. you you understand that? Absolutely. Hey, Joe, it has been great, man. I'm glad you reached out. I'm glad we were able to connect. This is beautiful. Let's keep this connection going. This is what sure. I'm about. Uh, this is what we should all be about: making Absolutely. those connections. And even when we don't agree, we can still we can we can agree to disagree, man. Okay. And, and still, because there are so many more things that we have in common. Exactly. And that's what that's what the people we need to start looking at the commonalities. We might not agree, you know, politics, religion might be touchy, but there yeah. are other commonalities that we have that we can share, that we can build upon, man. And so I love the fact that you were able to do this and reached out, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. That. And you don't really see this too often. No. We're proof that we can do it. It can be done, y'all. Leo, yes. We just did it. <laughs> so you can too. Connect and talk and it's all love, you know. So thanks so much, Irima, for checking uh, hanging out with us and uh, we'll do this again absolutely and you uh you uh you have a splendid rest of your day brother and when i'm up in philly we will definitely connect hit me up hit me up for sure okay. catch you later man peace blessings peace